arthrology of the AC joint. So what we have is um, a joint where the distal aspect of the clavicle is convex, the chromium is concave, and there's a disc between the distal end of the clavicle and the chromium. However, some people don't have a disc. And if you do have a disc, it slowly degenerates over time. So the joint ends up degenerating and becomes more planar as you get older. Okay? If they have a disc, they actually have two joint capsules. Okay? If they don't have a disc, they have one joint capsule. Okay? The joint is supported by ligaments, as you guys know. The superior AC joint ligament is, is strong. There's actually one underneath the AC joint that's the inferior AC joint ligament that's actually weaker. Okay, strong on top, weak on the bottom. Then we have the um, coracochromial ligaments and coracoclavicular ligaments. Coronoid and trapezoid are the more important ones. The trapezoid ligament prevents anterior roll of the clavicle, and the coronoid prevents posterior roll of the clavicle. So really we have a very, very small glide in the joint, very small. This joint functions more on a rolling with a scapula and a pivoting coming from the, AC, the SC joint. Okay? So with elevation of the glenohumeral joint, this is flexion, by the way, and as you get past 90, it's called elevation. This is a posterior roll of the clavicle with a small anterior glide. Internal rotation and extension, anterior roll of the clavicle with a small posterior glide. Okay, on your left side, Drew. If you want to check it passively, I'll have you back up a little bit towards me. Resting the arm just on the torso like that, you want to come in and, gla and palpate the clavicle right along the mid part of the clavicle is the best place to palpate for. And you want to feel that with anterior roll, with protraction of the scapula, and you want to feel posterior roll with retraction of the scapula. Okay? There's not much glide to feel. Just feel for the roll. Okay? And if you want to put this behind their back, it actually gives you a little bit more to feel. Anterior roll. Anterior roll. He doesn't have a lot of it anterior roll. Posterior roll, we'll take his arm right here and feel the posterior roll of the clavicle. The medial border of the scapula should come all the way back to the spine on most people. If it can't come all the way back, you're probably looking at a soft tissue restriction coming from pec, subscapularis, um, any other structures, primarily the pectoralis. Really normal mobility of the scapula the thoracic joint should be all the way to the vertebral. The vertebral column of the scapula should be actually touching the spine. So look for that in your patient as well. Okay. The glides. I have you sit up for that one. We can videotape that much better that way. We're going to fix. You can either do, uh, you can come in and fix the acromion, glide the clavicle anterior, fix the acromion, glide it posterior, or you could fix the clavicle and glide the acromion anterior posterior. Notice that when I, glide the, when I glide the acromion, I'm gliding a little bit on a curved plane. It's not a straight linear glide. If I do a straight linear glide, look at this. Compare it if I do it in the plane of the joint. Look at the difference. Okay? So it's concave, and so you have to go in the same direction in a little curved plane of a glide there. Okay. That's biomechanical assessment of the AC joint. And finish off some of the anatomy here. So this is a, a significant area right here where the back of the acromion turns into the spine of the scapula. And where it turns into the spine, typically there's a little bit of a sharp edge to it. And there's the spine of the scapula there. Uh, right where the acromion comes back and turns into the spine, 
that V, that's exactly a couple of uh, significant places or points of that, is that's exactly where the infraspinatus muscle turns into a tendon. So if you want to do a friction or treatment of the myotendon junction, you'd come to that V and drop straight down. Tendons there, muscles there. It's also significant where the orthopedic surgeons do a subacromial injection. They find that V, they drop in with their um, syringe and they go deep and hit the subacromial uh, uh, recess that way. It has a lot of, uh, it's a big uh, joint space that direction. So they infiltrate the bursa by coming from the back. Okay. Um, And then we have Terry's minor coming up into a little bit more inclination, coming up and joining into the rotator cuff with infraspinatus. So your V is your landmark coming down in your own infraspinatus, and then Terry's minor here. You can follow it up into the, uh, the, the insertion to the greater tuberosity. Okay, Drew, sit back up for me. Supraspinatus, we're going to put his hand behind his back. And if you look at, um, this is not necessarily the greatest position to do it in. If you can actually get more shoulder extension. So what I'll do is actually come in and I'll just lay my hand like this and just hold his arm like that. What you need is adduction, extension, internal rotation. By laying his hand there, you don't get enough extension. So just put your arm here and have him just relax his hand like that. You're there. So we know we, we come into the uh, AC joint again, drop into your V, drop down, and you should be able to feel the shelf of the tenoperiosteal junction of supraspinatus. Okay, it's fairly large, and it's sitting anterior now because we've taken the humeral head and we've rolled it forward like that. So now my supraspinatus is sitting right there, easy to palpate, and its anatomy feels just like that. Okay. All right, I want, I want everybody to go through that detailed surface anatomy of the shoulder. I want you to draw it. We're going to check your drawings and I want you to be real specific with it.